Parks, thanks for welcoming me back. We're going to get some sap going in the background. It has been asked a little bit, did you ride any of the Star Wars rides? We did not ride any of the Star Wars rides. The reason is because all three of them have a height limit. So unfortunately, we were kind of gated for at least another year or so, maybe maybe two years from... Uh, being able to do Rise of the Rise of the Resistance Star Tours and Smugglers Run, um, yeah, I'm I'm too short. By the way, that photo that uh, I took with someone who recognized me on the first day, a lot of people are saying that I'm very short. That's not true. I'm like I'm five ten, which is like maybe a little short. But a he was six four. As he said in the, and I'll be like a rude investor or whatever. Um, he was 6'4", okay? And also, he was very, I'm, I'm just going to say that he knew how to take photos. Because he had angled him, he'd positioned himself in front of me and angled himself a little bit towards the camera. So as a result, it looked like I'm shorter than I am. And also, I have size 13 Blundstones on. So just, it, it tricks your brain because you see such a long object at the bottom of the image, it messes with your perspective like Peter Jackson style to make it seem like I'm shorter than I am, okay? A lot of people, they, they don't understand physics like that. By the way, buy, sell goes insane this week. I'm just going to go, I'm going to say it. I'm going to say enjoy your 10 piece. But I will say, I, I know, I mean, understandably so, people are like, you know, cynical about Disney. Even though we didn't do any of the rides in the Star Wars area, the Star Wars area itself, I w would have blown my mind when I was uh, like 12 years old. And I mean that in a positive way. Like there's a, when you're there, you're not just going on rides. There's like, you can scan your wristband and then like they'll give you a... a a bounty to target, and then if you you use your wristband and like try to find the person who's uh, who who you're supposed to get, and then you uh, you get them, and then you go back, and they give you some credits. You could use the credits on your phone to like buy stuff to outfit yourself. Like it's like actually they did a really good job with that. Much better than the than the Pinocchio section for sure. Did you have any blue milk? Kate got the blue milk. She said, well, I, I had some too. It was good. I would definitely recommend the, the blue milk over the, the Mickey sipper. Why don't you go? Why don't you go here? The blue milk was pretty tasty. What's the Mickey sipper? My wife just uh, randomly said after this ride, I want to get a, a Mickey sipper. And then she got a, it's basically like a, 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 a Slurpee in a big Mickey Mouse cup. Nothing wrong with, not that there's anything wrong with that. I did not get a Dole Whip. Don't worry, I, I ate some stuff that was not good for you, but I did not get a Dole Whip. We should be buying and we should be selling. We have one faint trigger, so give me this and then sell me. I did not get a corn dog. I got a churro. I got a I got a, a Mickey Mouse pretzel. I ate a lot of fried foods. Also, like every uh, every meal, we got chicken tenders for my daughter. She never ate the chicken tenders. She only ate the fries. So I ate all of her chicken tenders as well. And then at the airport yesterday, my wife ordered chicken tenders. They gave her five. She only wanted three. She only ate two. So I had three chicken tenders. Also, I, people make fun of Vancouver, for, and perhaps deservedly so, for, um, and, and watch this unwind right here, for not being able to handle the snow. You haven't seen uh, snow mediocrity until you've gone to uh, the Orange County Airport, until you've flown out of Santa Ana John Wayne International Airport during the only time that it snowed in like the last half century. The power went out in the airport Two times, I don't even, is that a normal occurrence? We were in line for security, the power went out, we had to sit there for like 20 minutes because the dude couldn't scan the, our passports. And then when we, we ordered lunch 
And then the power went out again and the waiter came out and was like, oh, the fryers lost power. So like we have to, it's, it's going to be a little bit longer for your food. And we're like, that's fine. And it w was fine because then our flight got delayed um, by an hour. And then it got delayed by like another 45 minutes. We ran to the gate thinking we might be a little bit late. They were like, oh, you're not at gate 14 anymore. You're at fucking gate two or uh, you're not at gate two anymore you're at gate 14 we run across the whole terminal go to gate 14 see a huge crowd of people we're like what's going on they're like oh they moved us to gate four okay run back across the other side of the airport it's driving me crazy man shit was ridiculous then they they had the audacity to text my wife they said they texted her and said we apologize your flight's been delayed due to a security incident on the previous flight Bullshit. I think that's just you. You can always text and say, oh, there was a security problem because nobody's going to be like, oh, just rush it. Right. Everyone's going to be like, thanks for keeping us safe. I don't buy it at all. Probably, you know, refuse to pay their staff a living wage. So they decided not to show up today. And now they're trying to, you know, scramble together to put together a flight crew. Anyway, sorry, we're doing really well on the on the run so far. Yeah, sure. Buff, buff each other. Honestly, you deserve it. It's about damn time. I'm going one more. Ooh! I don't know if this is any good at all, really, but that's very good. Okay. He's base farming. That's about it. That's all I got. I guess I'm based farming. Um, <clears throat> did you go to the Marvel campus? <laughs> I don't want to brag necessarily. But did we see Spider-Man himself? Yeah. Yeah, I think we might have seen Spider-Man himself. I, we made it, it was appointment viewing to see the part where Spider-Man flies on the Avengers campus. Because you know I love that video where, well, multiple videos where he bricks it and then just like... Uh, you know, crashes into the, the building, but he did not crash. He, he, he did a nice flip and he, he landed okay. But what's great is that the, the girls next to me, there were like, I guess it's Disney, so it makes sense. There were so many like high school aged girls there for like a cheerleading competition. So there's like a group of 12 girls next to us. And one of the girls was like, how did they do that? And then the one girl was like, she's so adamant. She's like, it's a stunt man. It's just, it's not actually the actor, it's just the stunt man. And I'm like, she said it was a stunt man, and then they fired him out of a slingshot. And you're like, this, it got, the dude got shot like 200 feet into the air or something, and then like crash landed on the other side of a building. And they're like, it's not a stunt man, it's a robot that fails 3% of the time, okay? I think you should go. I don't, I don't think you're doing enough for us anymore. Did he make the landing? I, I don't know if I would say that he made the landing uh, perfectly. What I would say, sure, give me this, is that it, he, because there was a voice line after it where he said, ooh, that was not a good landing, but it didn't, like, it looked pretty clean to me. They're doing a Doberman pivot. By the way, I need to, when I record Super Auto Pets this week, I gotta record a, a one with a Doberman because I, I have a great title for a video. It's Doberman. It's so Doberman. It would totally work. Minus two. Okay, never mind. I will not be doing that. How about one of these? How about one of these? And you know what? How about, how about one of those for now? Why not? Why don't you come to the front, you go here, and then watch this. Now watch this drive. Are there pills in this pack? There are not, but so far the weekly I have, I have found very, very fun. The strategies are like wide open until eventually scalers just take over everything, but like the, the mid game is actually like a lot of fun. Shrimp and uh, buy sell is good. Emu is is good. Like you can get some cool like emu surgeon fish runs going. There's a little bit of trumpet synergy. Like there's now by probably by like round seventeen, you're just gonna see like 
level three poodle, level three penguin, and then you're going to be a squad of like 50-50s, but otherwise it's pretty sick. Okay, we got, we got chocolate coming up next. I'm going to sell you. I'm going to buy you. I'm going to sell you. I mean, you could get buffalo going with this buy sell, but it's just a little, it's a little honk, shoo, you know what I mean? It's just a little like, shoo. I've had some good, uh, some good hedgehog runs as well. By the way, I, I, I know it's been a while since we've had NL's movie corner. I got to watch a movie on the flight down. I got to watch a movie on the flight back. On the flight down, we watched Jordan Peele's movie, Nope. I thought it was very good. I enjoyed myself immensely. Um, had a great time. On the way back, saw the menu. Enjoyed myself immensely. Had a great time. Both, I would say both of those movies were... They, they were not overhyped. Both very enjoyable. I was going to watch Top Gun Maverick, but it just seemed like a little too cliche maybe to watch it like on an airplane. I don't know, maybe because we didn't hit too much turbulence, but it might have been a little spooky too. I'm going, I'm going for it. I'll go half squatted. You think I care? I missed the part where that's my problem. We're at seven wins on round nine. I watched Airplane on an airplane. That's the way to do it. Hey, I'm a little upset at, at what you've done to my... Um, what you've done to my Silver Fox here that I only bought so I could get one extra gold. I'm going sicko mode. Apparently, my definition of sicko mode is doing the most obvious play that you could possibly do. <laughs> that's, that's sicko mode in my world. Let's freeze two of these. I'm not worried about the shrimp, though. <clears throat> oh, no. It's the poodles and penguins. I should have known, because the... the I was playing the game on, what day is today? I was playing the game on Tuesday. No, today's Tuesday. I was playing the game on Monday, and on Monday everything seemed, it, 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 it was so easy. Wait, I got 12 gold. We got so much HP. Let's go Big Fox, man. There you go. Send him. Buy him. Um, do not sell him yet. I don't think we're going to, well, we do do buy, sell, maybe. Hey, Anel, I went to the Canucks versus Stars game last night in Dallas. Canucks went off. I don't want to talk about my team right now for a couple of reasons. One is, like, um, we're supposed to lose, but we keep winning. Also, we, in our quarter season tickets package, we had tickets to see the, the Bruins at Canucks game. We can't go because we're, like, you know, away from home. So we tried to sell the tickets. The tickets did not sell. Then I go check the score when we come back from, from Disneyland. And uh, we not only did we lose, which is actually good, but we got scored on by the damn goalie. It's only happened nine times in, in NHL history. When I checked the box score and it was like Linus Ulmark, first goal of the season. I was like, that's the damn, that's the keeper, man. That's not right. It's not the way it's supposed to go. It was a great shot. I'm, I'm like, I'm genuinely not like mad. Wait a minute. I should not have done this. We're going to lose. It's it's actually it's it's Dober, man. Maybe I could maybe I could snipe my way out of this. I did I was gonna at you, Jay. I was gonna say uh I was gonna say congratulations on winning the Timo Meyer uh sweepstakes. Man, we are we are scaled out here. Outscaled, I should say. This is this is bad. Please give me chocolate or leopard. Oh <laughs> there's there's no hope. There's simply no hope. I don't know. Um, you take some popcorn, I guess. Catch up on all the trade stuff. I mean, the Canucks trades are like nothing. Maybe we'll retain some salary for, for Patrick Kane. But um, I don't really, I'm not I'm not sweating it either way. This we we stalled out so hard. Holy cow. Seven? JT Miller's on the trade block? Yeah, but this, you know, it takes two to tango, you know? Here's your seven piece. 
Like just just because he's on the block, you know, somebody needs to be like, hey, I'm gonna I'm gonna buy low on this guy the year before his eight year contract kicks in. It hasn't been a banner year for for J T Miller's value. Not T J Miller. That's that's two different. In, we we do this every time. We don't have to do it again. What's the deal with Luke Shen? What do you mean, what's the deal with... I don't work for the Vancouver Canucks. I don't know what you're asking me. Like, there's questions that I, I can't answer for you here. He's a good player on a decent contract. Who, Luke Shen? I mean, I... Luke Shen is making like $750,000 a year. He's a, he's a serviceable third-pairing D-man on a potential contender. That's... That's my two cents on that. But again, I'm not an NHL general manager. I'm just a guy who goes to the games and, you know, looks around at people that yell shoot. Give me this. Honestly, don't give me this. Give me some more faint triggers. You have a faint trigger. Let's give it a shot for now. Why not? This is shop difference. In the business, we call this shop difference. He got me. What's the deal with Rogers Arena parking? Bro, we have public transit. I, also, I had another good joke. I was going to take a picture of all the people in Disney California Adventure that were taking pictures of the streetcar, and I was going to say... Americans when they see public transportation, but then I thought, you know what? I don't want to. It's a. It works better in my head. But there were so many people in like Cincinnati Bengals Super Bowl loser merch that were like, "Whoa, dude! A streetcar!" <clears throat> Anyway, one second. Um, you're not a faint trigger, so we're going to pass on you for a second. No disrespect to Ohio. Um, yeah, no disrespect to Ohio in many ways. I'm going to give you some of this. Now, this is going to look a little crazy. And it may, might be a little crazy. I'm going to give you a chance to, to survive. I'm going to give you a chance to thrive. I'm going to give you a chance to, to pop off. I think the hedgehog can actually... I think it can do something this week. I think it can go a little crazy. We're going hog crazy. Jesus be ballin'. Keep seeing, what's the most overrated thing at Disneyland? I don't know, overrated? Do people like It's a Small World? Because I definitely heard people be like, we have to go on It's a Small World tomorrow because we didn't go today. And I'm like, that's definitely, if you were like excited about going on it, then you need to seek, you need to find God. Because it's so, <laughs> I mean, I get it's a classic. It's like 60 years old, but it's so bad and boring. It's so parents can sit down. I could see that for sure. Matterhorn bobsled's kind of overrated. You got to defer to the boss on that one. She she did all the... Oh, you're a faint trigger. She did all the, the real roller coasters, which is actually like, it's better for me because I don't really like roller coasters. But I will say I did ride the Incredicoaster um, when, when we went to California Adventure like five years ago. Autopia is the worst. That was the first thing we rode, and I was like, <laughs> I mean, it, it, the, Autopia wasn't for me. Autopia was for my child, so that my two-year-old could feel what it's like to drive a car, and maybe finally she would respect me. But yes, it's basically like driving a car at six miles an hour on a track. Also, because she was driving, I think it gave me like whiplash. Because the way that it works is like the car. You know, in the undercarriage, there's like a little barrier, so you can't go too far to the left and you can't go too far to the right. 
So when she was driving, I was holding the pedal down to the metal and she was just going like, dong, 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 dong. And it was like so, like it wasn't that cold. It was probably like low single digits Celsius. But I didn't bring gloves because it's like Southern California, right? It's almost Mexico. It's raining, like your hands are soaked. You're white knuckling the steering wheel. And I'm like, ah! <laughs> Every time we hit the barrier, it was like my bones were rattling. It was cold, man. It was pretty chilly. And the, no, the ride is, I'm going to, that's not the premier ride. Well, that's what I'm saying. It was almost like you can, I feel like you can chart the success of the Disney Corporation um, based on, like, the, when the rides were built. Something was fucked up between, like, 1983 and 2002. From, like, the Pinocchio ride to the Monsters, Inc. ride, they were just, they were phoning it in. Every ride was like, what if the movie was a ride that you just go on like a little tour and they're like, remember this part of the movie? Remember this part of the movie? And then the, the stuff that they built in the last 10 years is fucking crazy. Jay, you ever ride the, the Mickey Mouse runaway railroad ride in Toontown? You go, you watch a little Mickey Mouse cartoon, the screen explodes. You walk through the screen, you get on a train the train breaks apart and all of a sudden you guys are like spinning around and going into different rooms and then like you're getting back on the train in a different order than you started with. It's, in, it's crazy. This is a very cool ride. I did hear that it's, it's kind of like the all ages rise of the resistance. Next time. I gotta be honest, when it, ooh, <laughs> do I really wanna buff you? Do I really want to make you cry? Do I really want to? I gotta think about this one. We might start unwinding the, the frilled dragon. Also, I don't, <laughs> it is funny to me. I, en I enjoyed myself immensely. I had a great time. But there's a little, there's a cynic deep inside of me, for sure. It's crazy to me that there were, you, there were some people in Disneyland that were having the time of their lives. But then like one in 10 families was on the brink of complete collapse, without a doubt. I don't know, it's, I, I guess it's stressful. You know what, I, I, was, I, was, I was meditating on it when I was doing the, my dadly duty of waking up at 6 a.m., taking a half hour bowel movement, hopping in the shower, uh, waking up, getting dressed going out, buying coffee and juice and breakfast for everybody, walking back to our hotel room, everybody's still asleep, sitting down in the only chair in the hotel room and silently drinking my cold brew coffee and eating a blueberry muffin before everybody wakes up. One kid, no sweat. Two kids, I listen, I'm not saying it's not harder. No sweat. Three kids, you know in like drag races when you're supposed to shift, when you red line and, the, and it goes That's three kids. If you have four plus children, you are built different. You've lost your mind. You're insane. You're crazy. Families with one kid picking their kids up. Hey, princess, have a fun time. Oh, sure, let's do this again. Families with two kids. Okay, you, can you take your sister on the merry-go-round? And uh, me and your mom are just going to get something from Pim's Test Kitchen. Three kids start, definitely started to be a little bit like, you look after your sister and you go on like the goofy sky school while we take your little sister onto the carousel. Whenever I saw a family with four plus kids, I was like, this is a damn nightmare. <laughs> so, this is a complete like... What have you done to yourself? You did, and that's the thing, is like, you did it, bro. It's not like, if, if you had one kid, and then you had triplets when you went for the second, I would be like, that's a blessing, because that's what you're supposed to say, but also like, surprise, motherfucker. But then when they have like, four kids that are two, three years apart each, I'm like, you did it. You went from one to two and you said, this is magical. Should we do three? Sure, why not? Then you're like, oh, I'm so tired. You know what? Ah, screw it. Let's do four. What are you doing? Anyways, your life.
Hang on, I'm just thinking. <laughs> just thinking. You're not long for this world. If you're not long for this world, you should be gone now. You should become part of the squad, but you need some more HP. This, it, it'll take a minute to get there, but that's okay. Rome wasn't built in a day. Um, yep, yep, yeah, yeah, this is not gonna, this is okay. Everybody just chill. No, there's no space for you, unfortunately. Okay, that's fine. This team's definitely going to three. You're crazy, dude. The cricket's gonna do work for us. I'm thinking about saving myself from it and just getting a vasectomy at age 18. Listen, in all honesty, I would not recommend that. I'm not going to tell you to have kids, but like, if you're 18, don't go... I, my personal opinion is don't go in for like surgery to... There's other ways that you can... I mean, you can use contraception, I guess. I'm not trying to make this like the talk, but... You'll be, you'll be fine. That being said, I might go in for a vasectomy. I'm 34. <laughs> when my wife was doing like almost all of the work, I was like, dude, it'd be nice to have two kids. Once, once the kid got a little older and I'm doing a lot of the work, I'm like, ah, no shot, dude. I don't know. Maybe, it'll, maybe I'll feel differently someday, but don't really need you to, to level up here. I'm not, I'm not that concerned about you. You definitely need some support, though. I would roll. I would love to see another penguin. This is not the Doberman run. Just snip it. <laughs> I don't know. We'll see. Like, there's no rush. We'll see. I'm definitely not going to let Twitch chat make the decision for me, though. I do. I, I hate the fact that people are saying only children are creepy. Dude, I'm an only child. I'm the... I know you're probably like, exactly, but... Okay, one of these. Freeze this. But def I don't know if you felt the same way, Kate. I saw a lot of like... Well, you know what's funny is that I also, like... I really feel like one to two kids was the sweet spot for happiness at Disneyland. I didn't tell you this, Kate, but when I was waiting for you um, next to the carousel, when you when you had done uh, the Cars ride, there was like a boyfriend and girlfriend having what I would describe as the most condescending fight I've ever heard in my entire life. Now, admittedly, they were young. They were in like their early 20s, maybe. But the guy was talking to his girlfriend. He's like, stop. Like, okay, I get it, but you're really going to be mad, like, all day? And I was like... And then she was like, I'm just going to leave. And he was like, bro, don't leave. Then she walked away, and he was like, okay, fine. And then he, like, was just following behind her by, like, three feet. And I was like, this is not good. But felt like there were, there were some couples that were, that were having a great time. There were some couples that were not having a great time. And then there was, like, families with one to two kids. It seemed like that it's the most magical place on Earth. Especially if their kids were, like, you know, two. I'm basically talking about us. And then families with, like, five kids, definitely. And I'm not saying, like, we would be in a different spot. I'm like, I see why you're stressed out. Like, you, because you're, you're, you don't really get to have a great time at Disneyland as, like, a, a mom or a dad of five kids. You're managing, like, the, the future of your county, like, right there, every day, every minute. One kid's always like, I'm thirsty, and another kid's like, I gotta go to the bathroom, and then another kid is like, I'll never go on this ride, and then another kid is like, you know, all I want to do is go on this ride. If your kid is, like, super young, they're, like, throwing tantrums for, for no reason, you just give them, like, a little cookie. Like, are we have one kid, my backpack was, was bursting. Bibs, cookies goldfish uh so many different wet wipes water bottles diapers like it's uh, ointments and uh, various toys that we could give her because 99 percent of the time this toy works but sometimes she's like get out of my face the ipad the like it's it's crazy you got five kids i don't know i don't know what you do 
I don't know what I'm doing either. Wait a minute. We haven't really played too much sap today so far. This is very true. Why don't you kickstart my heart here? And why don't, we, why don't we try to push position four up just to see how it goes? iPad at Disneyland? Yeah, you know, I mean, while well, mom and dad are eating a, a Pim Mini at uh, Pim's Test Kitchen, like, uh, you know, the baby needs something to do. What's a Pim Mini? It's half a Panini. That's $15.99. American poodle, yeah, then you know could have could have definitely would have been a good choice, but I was I was just rolling for some reason. Uh, rolling, I can't. You know what? I'm gonna I'm gonna go insane here. Toss a little, toss him a parrot. Very versatile, I've heard. Oh, another poodle, huh? Okay. I don't get sticker shock, like, too much these days, especially, like, I, I get a little annoyed when people go to a, a place where things are, like, like notoriously expensive and then go, like, wow, it's expensive here. I'm like, yeah, you're at the, the hockey game. Like, what'd you expect? I got a little sticker shock when we went out to eat at downtown Disney, for sure. We went to a brew pub the first night. I looked at the beer list, and it was, like, a 16-ounce beer was... I think it was like $16 USD. And I went, holy cow. And then I went, yeah, I'll take one. We're at Disney. <laughs> it's like a dollar an ounce, man. It's madness. It's like 12 in Chicago. Well, listen, I'm used to, in Vancouver, I would say a... A, a 20 ounce pint in an expensive city would probably be, I would think at this point, nine to $10 Canadian, which is like $8 American, I guess. Okay, yeah, Apollo, cereal, there's, are you asking how to type it or are you asking um, what it is? Because you type it with cereal in all caps um, not like Sarah Caning, you know, like the, um, the podcast, but like the, the, the thing you eat for breakfast, unless you eat the podcast for breakfast. I mean, it was a phenomenon for a while. Um, oh, it's uh, sorry. Just the C is capitalized. My mistake. But if you haven't seen the picture, the picture is the, the, the rage comic eating cereal. And then he's <laughs> spitting it out. Cause he's like surprised. I don't know if you knew that. I just wanted to give you some support. I think we're going to 10. I'd be surprised if we didn't. By the way, nobody nobody asked me about the Peloton today. Do you just assume? You just assume that I wouldn't ride because we got home like fairly late last night because John Wayne Airport can't handle a little snow? Like, don't insult me. Of course I did. I mean, t it had been four days. Oh. So you know I did my, my 90 minutes. So at, a, at around 170 something watts, 30 minute Emma Lovewell classic rock ride, I think it was all like Beatles plus Beatles solo artists. And then 30 minute Sam Yo, uh, low resistance, and then 30 minute uh, Cody Rigsby pop ride to celebrate 50 years of Australian Pride Month. How about take one of these? It was it was basically eleven Kylie Minogue songs. Macros, are you here? I can't take Emma Lovewell's rides anymore. She's too much. What do you What do you mean she's too much? She's too much. I don't. I, I'm I'm not being. Facetious. What, like, it's too, she's too extra, as the kids say these days? Or is it like, um... No! The trumpets! Lubega! She is a little extra. You didn't like the, the... 
30 minute um, Emma Lovewell live DJ ride. I, I greatly enjoyed that with DJ John Michael. Listen, like the track list is not what I would say is like my favorite music of all time. But either way, like I, he, the enthusiasm was, was getting me, man. The way, the way DJ John Michael was pogging up for My Life Would Suck Without You by Kelly Clarkson. I think I'm being like radicalized to um, enjoy dog shit music. Did you take the T-Pain ride? Yes, I did. I, I love T-Pain and I want to I wanna put respect on T-Pain's name. But I do need to say that I think that that's got to be possible. Okay, five wins, not ten, huh? That's got to be p probably the worst Peloton ride I've ever taken. And I, you, listen, I ain't even know it, even know it till they call me to the stage and they're in. You seen a man throw it, throwing that ass for days, shorty going up. I ain't got no problems, but I'm just trying to tell you, I, I, I'm a T-Pain head. I know the lyrics, the loquacious Lothario, auto-tuned or not auto-tuned. God gave him auto-tuned. The man has talent, okay? That ride is not good. With, uh, with, f for my personal, what I'm looking for out of a Peloton ride, it's not, uh, it, that ain't it. That's just tips.